Hey guys, it's Finn. In this video, I'm going to talk about the crossover method and distance function. But before I do that, I need to explain to you something very important. So, usually when we do crossover or the distance function, it's basically the same. We need to iterate through all the connection genes and compare them. Uh, we might have disjoint genes like th the uh, gene 3 or an access gene like the gene 6. And um, the problem is about comparing. When we, uh, we need to align them by taking their innovation number. This isn't that easy in Java, so I came up with a different method. What I'm doing is, in Java I've got aligned arrays where the data is just sequentially stored without any spaces in between. So I came up with a few rules that will do exactly the same as comparing the innovation numbers. Um, and it's, it goes like this. So um, the three rules are if both innovations are the same, we're going to the next index for both of them, or for the next to the next connection gene for both of them. If the innovation number of A is higher than the one of B, we will go to the next gene of B, and we've got a disjoint gene of B. Same like uh, the other way around for um, for ta for the innovation number of B. If it's greater than the one of A, we've got an you know, uh, we've got a disjoint gene of A. And um, well, I can prove to you that this works, and we can make a little example. So the first case would, um, in the first example, we would have one and one. It would be the same innovation number, and we'd go to the next um, to the next connection gene for both of them. Uh, now the same again, and he would realize that the um, that the, like in in reality, there's a disjoint gene of A. And we would see that the, that the innovation number of B is greater than the innovation number of A. So we'd, we would have uh, the third case and we have an excess or disjoint gene of A. In fact, we will not, um, we will not talk about excess genes yet, but only about disjoint genes. So we would go to the next gene of A. Um, next, we would, have four, we would compare 4 and 4. And we're doing the same in the bottom. Um, next, we would have... Uh, we would increase both of them, then we would have we would compare five and six. And we would see that in reality we are comparing five with nothing, so we would have a disjoint gene in B. And in fact, rule um, the second rule is right. We we got the second case right now, so the innovation number of A is greater than one of B, and we go to the next gene of B. In this case, there are no genes left, um, so we might have to catch this in Java, but we go right into the code. So let's go into our genome class and let's go to the let's implement the distance and the crossover method. So um, there I need to say a few things. Basically, they look very similar. So I'm going to start with the distance function and later on implement the crossover method because that's a lot of copy and paste. But for the distance method, it's very important to note that um, we're going to have two different genomes in here. Like the first one is the class itself. The second one is the um, object that we are comparing it with, the first object must have the highest innovation number. This is very important for this method to correctly calculate the amount of access genes. I'm not going to prove this for you, but um, you might need to trust me that this is true. So let's um, start with the basic function and later um, implement this thing with the highest innovation. So let's start with genome g1 is equal to this and we've got the g2 genome so we can compare these. So the second thing that we want to do is um, so we need we need something called an index. The index is basically at what connection gene we are currently at for the first genome and the second genome. So index one and index two, or index g two and index g one. Then we need a while loop. This while loop runs until uh, the in any of these indices is out of bounds. So index g one is must be smaller than g one dot get connections dot size. And index g2 needs to be smaller than g2 dot get connections dot size. So um, let's extract the connections. Oh, it needs to be initialized to zero, um, and we need to. Uh, we are doing the increasing later. So um, let's extract the connection first. So connection gene gene one is equal to g1 dot get connections dot get at the index. Uh, second, let's do this for the second gene as well. So gene two is equal to g two dot get connections dot get at index g two, uh, and let's also get the innovation number. 
So uh, in one is the innovation number of the first gene, is equal to gene one that get innovation number, and in in two is equal to gene two that get innovation number. Now let's go through three cases. The first one was if the innovation number is the same. So if in one is equal to in two, then we've got a similar gene, similar gene, and we're going to increase the index for both of them. So we're basically this means that we're going to the next gene for both of them. The, the other case is, um, I think it was that the in, f first innovation is higher than the second innovation number, and then we will have a disjoint gene of B, and the index of that is going to increase by one. Uh, else we have a disjoint gene of A, like that, and the of A and the index G1 is going to increase by one. So this is basically the, the core structure, and we're going to implement a few things now. So uh, let me first copy this, so this is the important part. Um, so, okay, let's start with the distance function. There are a few things we need. So the first thing is we need to count the amount of disjoint genes. Disjoint equal to zero. Furthermore, we need to uh, count the amount of excess genes. Excess is equal to zero. We need to calculate the total wake difference, so to double wake diff. Um, it's the total wake difference. And we need to um, calculate the amount of similar wakes, so we can divide the wake difference by the amount of total wa uh, similar wakes to get the, um, the average wake difference. So int um, similar is equal to zero. So this is pretty straightforward. The similar is when we've got the similar genes, so similar is increased by one, and the disjoint gene is increased by one in the other cases, so disjoint plus plus and disjoint plus plus. The wake difference can be increased when we've got a similar gene. So wake difference is increased by the absolute value of gene one that get waked minus gene two that get waked. Um, how the x genes can be calculated later on. So we uh, we will ensure that G1 is going to have the highest innovation number. We will do the checking later. Um, but if that is the case, the amount of x genes is simply the um, G1 that get connections dot size. That's like basically the amount of connections that are in there minus the index that we're currently stuck. Um, so this this loop might cancel when there are no um, genes for G2 anymore. Um, and if that's the case, we're not going to iterate through all of the genes in in, ex, in gene one in genome one. Uh, and these genes that we are skipping are the excess genes. So um, this is basically how we um, calculate everything. We will divide the weight difference by the uh, amount of similar uh, similar genes. And this is basically it. So um, the last thing that we need is a, uh, we want to um, divide uh, all, our, all our stuff by a value called n, and basically n is the maximum amount of uh, connections that we have. So it's either it's in g1 that get connections of size, or we take the value of g2. So um, if g g1 has more connections that we're going to the amount of connections in G1, otherwise we're going to take the one in G2. Uh, but there's a case, I'm, I'm highlighting it in the top right corner in red, so if n is smaller than 20, we can also set n to 1. Now the formula is pretty simple, we're going to return the um, disjoint genes times a factor, but we're going to implement this factor later, divided by n, plus the amount of excess genes divided by n, plus the average wake difference divided by n. So these factors are called C1, C2, and C3, and I'm going to implement them into the need class. So um, I think I already did that. Did this, I created a, I created three fields, and um, I created a get, two, three getter methods for these, and I can use these in my, um, in my distance function, and simply call need.getc1 times that, need.getc2 uh, C2 by that, uh, C2 there, and C3. So let's also do the checking thing. 
So we will extract uh, the highest innovation number at the beginning. So in highest innovation of gene one is equal to g one dot get um, connections dot get at g one dot get connections dot size minus one. So it's basically the last um, value dot get innovation number. Get innovation number like that. We will do the same for the uh, second second one. So g two dot get g2 and so on and then we're going to ca compare them so if the highest innovation number is smaller than the highest innovation number of gene 2 we need to swap them so um, genome g is equal to g1 g1 is equal to g2 and g2 is g so we are basically swapping them so um, let's oh no g2 is equal to g1 no g1 is equal to g2 like that um, Okay, now let's go to the crossover method. I think it should be a little bit easier. So, um, when we have a similar gene, we will choose randomly if we take the first connection or the second connection. So, if math.random is greater than 0 0.5, we are going to um, take the first genome, otherwise we are going to take the second genome. So, oh, before I start, we need to actually create a new genome. Genome, genome that's like the child of them, is uh, g one dot get need dot empty genome. So we create a empty genome with uh, the input and output nodes. Then, if uh, method random is greater than zero point five, we're going to call genome dot get connections dot add, and the connection that we are adding needs to be copied first. And we created a method in the need object. So I maybe I might extract the need object first. So need need is equal to g one dot get need, and I can do this at the beginning. So I can call the need object in here. So need dot get connection, and we can put a connection in there. That's what we implemented in the last video, I think. So um, the connection is gene one. Otherwise, we will take the second gene, like uh, like that, gene two. So um, if we've got a disjoint gene of B, we are not going to do anything because um, I should have maybe said that. Um, I, I, um, I've written down the rules in here. I might have said something different in the first video, but there are multiple sources on the web and I've been a little bit confused about that. And you can uh, add these if you like. So you can add the disjoint genes of B, but I found a source where there are no disjoint genes of B, like the um, weaker child added, only the disjoint and exit genes of A. So if you like, you can put exactly this code into there. I can, I can do it as well. But I will comment it out because we're not going to use it. But there's no big difference in performance if you put it in. Um, so, but if there's a disjoint gene of A, we are simply going to add the gene of A. Okay. Now, basically, we did everything about the uh, disjoint genes, but we also need to add the excess genes of A. Um, so, what we are going to do is we are going to run through our index tree one. Like the index we want is still set to any specific value where we stopped. And we're going to run this at um, until we reach our last genome. So uh, at our last gene. So g one dot get connections dot size, and we're going to increase the index we one at the end. Basically, we can now um, simply add this genome as well because it's an extra gene, and we are always going to add it. The um, we copy this there, so we. Get, extract the connection gene at our current index and add it to the new genome. Next thing we need to do is we need to add all the nodes that we just, okay, like we created a lot of connections in our genome, but we, but we didn't copy the nodes yet. So we need to do this as well. Um, so for connection gene C in our genome.get connections, get data. We will copy the from and the to node. We we cared about duplicates in our random hash set class, so there cannot be any duplicates. So we don't have to do any checking. So um, genome. Dot get nodes. Dot add. C dot get from and genome get nodes. Dot add C dot get to. So this is basically it for this um implementation and I hope you liked this video if you have any questions feel free to ask me I'm I'm going to upload the whole code in the co in the comments 
uh, yeah, in, in the description. And hope to see you in the next video.